Shalom, Yasharal. I want to get infinite honors to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, and Karkadash. I want to get double honors to our teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to my fellow laborers in Yahweh Shah, pushing this truth across the four winds in his last days, sections, and times. Peace and blessings to the elect, the man laboring for that penny, that full day's pay, which equals the kingdom of heaven, man. Shalom to you, brothers. Uh, I came across, across this clip about his. Uh, by this rancher who uh raises cattle for a living and um he was he on this clip he's gonna get in about how a famine is coming you know now we all know through the through prophecy that the scripture says over and over that in the last days a great famine was gonna hit the planet so this is the most high is going through his particulars and it's about to come to pass in the coming days, man. And you can see it from um, a lot of these ranchers are saying that the it's not just this guy. I've seen other clips that the uh, FDA, the feds are telling them to kill millions of their livestock. They're putting uh, thousands and millions of chickens down, uh, animals pregnant with fetuses. They are aborting them. All right. Uh, a lot of these guys is growing vegetables and shit. They're telling them to get rid of, rid of their crop because of this corona shit. So these farmers who's not making their money is telling them it's not that we're just not making our money. A famine about to hit this bitch because this is how you people eat. So I'm going to um, play this clip and then funnel it through the scriptures. And bro, I got another. I got an excerpt I'm going to bring out too. Hey everybody, this is Shad Sullivan coming to you from the headwaters of Bitter Creek, Archer County, North Texas. We have to talk. State officials will be assisting to help identify potential alternative markets if a producer is unable to move animals and if necessary, advise and assist on depopulation and disposal methods. Ladies and gentlemen, we are plowing under vegetable crops from coast to coast. We are euthanizing millions of chickens. We are aborting sows and burying feeder pigs. We are dumping milk by the hundreds of thousands of gallons, and now they are preparing us to depopulate the fat cattle ready to harvest. Because of a bottleneck created by the effects of COVID, this thing hasn't been created by COVID, but the effects of COVID and the logistics therein, we are in trouble. Our food supply is in trouble, and I am appealing to producers and consumers across the nation. All right. You hear him say he's in trouble. He's languishing. All right. He's languishing. He he's he he's he's uh he's he's in bad case. All right, because the, his bread and butter is cut off. Let me get a precept for that. All right. Uh, these these prophecies are jumping off the book, man. This is um Isaiah the nineteenth chapter. And I'm going to start around. Where am I going to start? I need to part with the fishes. Uh, here we go. All right. The fishers also shall mourn. See, he's mourning right there. He's saying they're cutting off our, our livelihood. All right. He's a farmer, but they said the, the most highest calling the fishes both of them work all right he's a farmer you could say the farmers also shall mourn just change the words okay and they that cast an angle to the brooks shall lament all right cast an angle to the brook is when you're fishing all right this guy is raising cattle all right it's going bad for him it's gonna go bad for the fishermen too all right the fishermen are gonna be singing the same song all right and they that spread nets upon the water shall languish he's languishing all right. Just like the fishermen is you got the uh, farmers. All right. Those that herd stock cattle. All right. They're all languishing in mourning because their livelihood is taken away. OK. 
Moreover, they that work in fine flax and they that weave network networks shall be confounded no matter whatever line of work you're doing, man, in the society. All right. The rivers are dried up and they shall be broken in the purpose thereof that make uh, sluices and ponds for fish. OK, so this guy here, he raises vegetables, crops, and he he uh he raised up steers and mares, so on and so forth for his livelihood. OK. And he's not making a profit. And he knows that it's millions of farms, thousands of farms across America to do the same thing that he's doing. And the government is clamping down on all of them. He's saying, man, this is the way you people eat. So and when this when we get shut down, you y'all going to get shut down and a famine is coming. All right, let me get back to the clip. To start calling. Yesterday, the first shipment of imported beef from the country of Namibia hit the shores of the United States of America. And yet this morning, they are telling us to prepare to euthanize harvest ready cattle. Am I the only one that sees a problem in this? It is time we get the American people back to work. It is time we get money flowing. It is time we get food on the shelves. Because if you're not concerned about this food supply problem, you better be. We have a huge supply and demand of food across this nation. We can feed the world ourselves, and yet we're destroying our harvests. At the same time, we are importing beef from other countries, beef that is less regulated than our beef, less safe, not as high quality of product, and yet it's happening. At the same time, they are preparing for us to euthanize our harvests. Does that make sense to America? For the last 10 years, we have been uh, pressed to be sustainable. I've said all along, sustainability is a fraud. And right now, we're being forced to destroy our harvests. That doesn't sound like sustainability to me. It is time we get back to work. It is time uh, the American people force uh, the government to listen to us. We are of, by, and for the people. This is not Nancy Pelosi's country. This is not Donald Trump's country. This is your country, and you're going to go hungry. We must get regional and local packing houses up and going. Do we have to have those big, big packing plants? You bet we do, and they need to be running right now. You as a consumer are in trouble. My dad told me years ago the best thing that would happen to America is if everybody had to sit in the dark, cold, and hungry, and that would wake him up. Well, I think it's coming. We're in a dangerous position, ladies and gentlemen. Hold up. Let me get a precept for that. This is uh, Isaiah 19 and... 15, all right, his dad was right, all right, but no, they, no, these copper tops and people like him are not going to be delivered and comforted in that day when the famine hits, all right, neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which, which the head or tail branch of rush may do, okay, so when there's no work in Egypt, man, people are going to be in the dark, people are, bellies are going to be empty, all right. His dad was saying that and, and people are going to come to the conclusion that the government is satanic, but it's going to be too late because they're going to give up all their liberties. They're going to go get that chip and they're going to be a uh, goyim. All right. They're going to be robots. And the government is going to have full control and dominion of these simpletons, man. OK. His pops was right. We need to get going on this today, not tomorrow, today. You need to be calling your legislators. We need to be opening up the country. Your boots. All right. And you know, he's a devil. 
You know, I don't know if he's a confusing of face or he could be as a light. But your government, when they say go to your legislators, you man, your legislators are all a part of it. They're all a part of this beast system, man. All right? They're worshiping that image, man. Okay? You going you going to them is a waste of time. It's futile. They're the one helping pass these unrighteous decrees, man. All right? The only per people that you so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latin-speaking people can call on when this famine hits, when this pestilence hits, and all these atrocities hit is your high Shema Shah, and you have to do it now. Because when the Most High let those angels let those four winds go, it's going to be too late to call on them. And when you call on them, he won't hear you. Why is in danger? Ranchers are going broke every day. We're doing all we can to stay here. We are in crisis in America. This is you heard them say the ranchers are going broke every day, man. These people are losing their livelihoods, man. They're losing their livelihoods. Crisis. This is a national crisis. <laughs> he says, and everybody's just sitting crisis. back enjoying their time off, enjoying that twelve hundred dollars, not knowing that overnight you're going to go hungry. It's coming. My apologies for my tone. Now look. I'm about to go down here to the uh, comment board to show you how simple the, the simpletons are, all right? <coughs> if, if you have cattle ready to process, I'll buy one from y'all. All right. It was something that somebody had wrote. All right, this is this the one I want right here. Wild Spice Ranch. Now look, I got an excerpt for this one. The people like this, or this person is tight, they're gonna they're gonna become terrorists if you do this. Let me read it. This is why we started a homestead. A homestead is when you get a, a plot of land, you grow your own vegetables, you raise your own cattle, and you live off your land, all right? All right? Can't rely on the system. Yeah, they're big. They're in every store, supermarket, convenient, super cheap and reliable until they're not. All right? Now, the people are in their right mind, cornerly, cornerly, of course. Now, they're not. Start being a producer. It does not matter what level. Grow something, some tomatoes, peppers, potatoes, herbs, or anything. Start separating yourself from the monopoly world, and you'll be one step a step closer to true independence. And they're right, man. You got to be able to, in the ancient world, we grew our own food, man. We didn't go to the markets and all that. If we wanted wine, we had a vineyard. If we wanted strong drink, we made it. All right, if we wanted cucumbers or we had cattle, we had lamb, chickens, all right? It wasn't that uh, going to the supermarket. We we were able to fend for ourselves in the ancient world, okay? Now, somebody type, I don't believe this will work. All right, and this somebody is in reality. The world is coming to an end. The smartest, the, the smartest scientists have said we are more closer than ever. The government is trying to depopulate the world. They are trying very hard to crash their economy. The reason is because they want to push their agenda that is a one world government, one world religion. Many different people of different religions have signed a deal with the OWR. This is all pushing the agenda of the Antichrist. Jesus is coming soon. Repent. For your sins and trusting Jesus alone, we have much time. All right, for talking like that, now let me go to the Department of Home, Home State Security clip I got. Talk like that and talking about uh, talking about hoarding, um, stockpiling food and growing your own food will put you on the terrorist list. All right, this is a uh, CSO from IDG, a private and security fi uh, fanatic, a clip. All right. And this this is what it says. Ridiculous Department of Home Security list. You might be a domestic terrorist if. All right. Now, listen to this shit for the people that want to do homesteads and want to live off the land and be self-sufficient. Let's see what the government is going to is going to do people like you. 
An 18 year veteran in law enforcement warned to beware of home left security, homeland security training that is being pushed to, to local law enforcement. You might be a domestic terrorist if you believe in civil liberties or if you actually believe in your own constitutional rights. Sadly, this is not a joke. We have all heard that you might be a redneck if jokes. But in this series, you might be a domestic terrorist if you believe in civil liberties or if you actually believe in your constitutional rights. Sadly, this is not a joke. Damn, I just read this shit. You might also be a terrorist if you have ever expressed concerns of Big Brother. So, you know, us Israelites, we're on that terrorist. We're on that list. Are you a Christian who ever who has ever discussed the Antichrist, the Apocalypse, or even mentioned in the book of Revelation? See, we're on that. We're number one on that list. Us Hebrew Israelites, okay? Preferably the, the men in a great millstone because we're the ones who have the 100% truth. Guess what? According to the DHS, then you too qualify as a potential domestic terrorist. An 18-year veteran in law enforcement warned to beware of homeless security training that is being pushed to local enforcement. James Wesley Rawls recently posted on Ax Axiom for liberty some very dis disturbing trends in law enforcement training he reports a shift in focus in the last 18 years from local community to a federally dominated model of complete social control all right that's the beginning of this totalitarian society all right that you read in the book of 1984 all right come out of not surprisingly homeland security more specifically the long-reaching dhs Arms of TSA and FEMA have pushed heavily in the last two years of local law enforcement. Now, I'm, I'm about to get straight to the point. All right. Rawls writes that the following characteristic that qualifies a person as a potential domestic terrorist. Now, listen to this shit. Expression of li 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 libertarian philosophies, statements, and bumper stickers. All right. When you just talk about having liberty. All right. That's all us Israelites talking about, man. Having liberty to keep our commandments, getting rulership on the planet Earth. Second Amendment or oriented views, NRA, a gun club membership, holding a CCW permit. All right. Because they want to disarm before they attack. They want to disarm uh, the majority of the nation. Survivalist literature. Fictional books such as Patrix and One Second After are mentioned by name. So I know 19 George Orwell, 1984, got to be on the list. All right. So these uh, doomsday preppers, they're, they're deemed as uh, domestic terrorists. Self-sufficiency. All right. That's what that's what a homestead is. All right. What they what, what I just read on the comment board. Self-sufficient mean you're going to grow your own food, raise your own cattle, raise your own sheep, goats. All right. Learn how to filtrate water, have your own water filtration system all right that's enough to have uh homeland security deem you a domestic terrorist this is madness man stockpiling food elmo hand tools medical supplies all right that's enough to have you considered a domestic terrorist all right so you 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 trying to do build a homestead and be and, and fight the famine all right the government is going to come shut that shit down the government going to come shut that shit down and throw you in a fucking concentration camp, man. Fear of economic collapse. It fear of econ economic collapse. See, they don't want nobody to have um they don't want critical thinkers, analytical thinkers, people that can think past go. All right? People with brains. It's obviously an economic collapse is going. But if you have the mindset and you see it coming, you're going to be deemed a a domestic terrorists buying gold and barter items. All right. They won't, they won't mindless consumers, man. All right. And that's, that's what that book 1984 um, by George Orwell went into, man, a totalitarian society. They don't want nobody that has free thought. They can think outside of the box. Re religious views concerning the book of revelation. And that's like, Men of Great Millstone, man, we live in the book of Revelation. Apocalypse, Antichrist, 
express fears of big brother of big government. Homeschooling, something simple as homeschooling your children puts you on a, a domestic terrorist list. Declaration of constitutional rights and civil liberties. Belief in a new world order conspiracy. All right. So these are things that will have you um, on a terrorist watch list. So, you know, man, uh, that's why you got to count the cost when you come in this face, in this faith, because you're most definitely on the terror watch list, man. But I'm going to stay on topic about this famine, man. I'm about to go to, uh, I want to bring out that clip, the homestead during the famine for, for people that have that. I want to grow my own food. I want to uh, raise my own animals. Man, the government going to wipe, the, whip down on you, take your shit, euthanize your shit and put you in a fucking concentration camp, man. That's why the scriptures say we're going to be pilgrims in the earth. The most high is going to supply our needs, man. All right. This is second. There's a 16 and 22. This famine has to come to pass because the prophecy has to be fulfilled. You building a homestead is going against prophecy. Shit. This, when the most high say there ain't going to be no food or water in this bitch. It ain't going to be no food and water. All right. Second, there's a 16 and 22. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. And that's the worst way to die, according to the book of Lamentation. And the other that escape hunger shall the sword destroy. And the dead shall be cast out as dung. And there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down. There shall be no man left to till the earth or the soul. The trees shall give fruit and who shall gather them? The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? For for the places shall be disciplined of men. All right, that's going to be an economy collapse. All right, and you're going to have great death on the planet Earth, man. All right, these things must come to pass. So when you see the government shutting down all these uh, chicken farms and cattle farms and all of these commercial farmers, so on and so forth, that's the beginning of this famine that's about to hit, man. It's about to be a full-fledged famine in this bitch, man. All right? Going to the book of Ecclesiastes. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 4. Okay? And the door shall be shut in the streets, and the sound of grounding is low. So it's not about to be no work around here. All right? Ain't about to be no work around here. Ain't about to be no cattle. No 18 willers bringing in supplies, so on and so forth, all right? Everybody's about to be in bad case, all right? The hour of temptation is amongst us, and he that he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be bowed low. And when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and the fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, the grasshopper shall be a burden, and the desire shall fail. Because man go up to his long home and the mourners go about the streets. All right? So people are going to be in the streets. There's going to be blood in the streets. And the grinding is going to cease, man. There's not going to be no work here in Egypt, man. All right? The rivers are going to dry up. There's not going to be no uh, stability in this place. And the famine, the great famine is about to hit this bitch, man. All right? So... These prophecies are jumping off the book, man. And they jumping off the book. That's why us brothers, man, we are preparing to go through the worst time. It's about to be a hard, bumpy ride, man. But you got to have your faith built up, man. And, and know that the, during family, our great king, you know, um, Isaiah the 65th chapter, he said, my servant shall eat. Let me find that passage. Uh, Isaiah. 65 and 13. Therefore, say of Yahweh, thy power, behold, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. And his servants are the men of the Lord that's taking heed to this doctrine of life. All right? His servants shall eat, but what about those that are not his servants, those that are outside of the temple? They're going to starve. Behold, my servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. Okay? Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Okay? 
So, man, it's beautiful that the Most High gave us this doctrine to pull us out of this dark, perverse world into his marvelous light, man. All right? When everybody's a bad case, when that paradigm shift is taking place right now, his men of the Lord are going to be in good case, man. His servants are going to be in good case. That's why it's imperative to make your body a living sacrifice, man, and get, get built up on your most holy faith like the book of Jude, Jude says. And um, stay locked in to this, uh, these rivers of living water and this bread of life, the spiritual food, man. When you when you eat this spiritual food, it's going to stabilize you from these hard times, man, and keep you strong. So with that, I'm going to give infinite honors to our Heavenly Father and our great King, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, and Karkadash. All right, I want to give dumb honors to our teachers, the apostles, the great millstone, and salutation to my fellow labors and Yahweh Shah pushing this truth across the four winds. Quam Yashirah, La Baba Baal.